Cisco Certified Network Associate Day 36. Welcome back everyone. I'm Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Today we're going to learn Spanning Tree Protocol. This is a topic a lot of people get scared. Uh, this is one of the most difficult topics and it is difficult because people don't really understand what it does. I hope at the end of this video and maybe the next video you would understand how spanning tree works and you're gonna be so comfortable talking and dealing with STP so without wasting much time let's get straight into today's class and before we go ahead uh, this is my beautiful Windows desktop uh, screen for this week to know how to make your screen look like this click on the link on the top right hand corner of the screen right now and like always before we go ahead Please click that subscribe button right below this video and also that bell icon so that it notifies you whenever we put a new video. And no, don't forget to click on that like button which is your way of saying thank you. And as always, it's on the left side my uh, company contacts, on the right side my personal contacts. And for everyone who keeps asking me what is my email address. It is imran.rafai at nwking.org and like I have mentioned in my previous uh, videos, the best way to contact me is by commenting on this video uh, on YouTube. If not me, some one of my staff or your fellow learners would be able to help you and that will be the quickest way. You could email me but like I said because of the number of emails that I get I may not be able to reply to all of you. I do reply to some of you but if you don't get an email back from me please don't feel disheartened. It's just that I am not able to give enough time for everyone. Uh, but yes, one way you could get a reply from me is by donating and being one of our donors. And of course, my donors, I really love my donors. You are the reason why uh, we have such wonderful contents coming for free. So people who can't afford, that's fine. You can watch, enjoy. But people who can afford, please uh, consider donating. And the donation links are there on our website. Right. So without wasting much time, let's go to our uh, class today. Uh, today. Like I said, we are, we are following the uh, ICND exam topics as per Cisco's uh, website, and uh, today we have we are uh, following 1.3, and 1.3 is configure, verify, troubleshoot STP protocols. Uh, 1.38 says STP mode PVST plus and RPVST plus, uh, and then STP root bridge selection. Uh, because the topic is uh, quite big, I am going to take up this. Uh, in the next video that is uh, day 37 and I think I'm going to add this as well to day 37. So what are we going to look at today? We're going to look at what STP is. We'll try to understand STP. We'll look at STP modes that is PVST plus and RPVST plus and then uh, we will look at bridge ID and port cost. These are some of the components to understand bridge election process. Uh, the bridge election process like I said we'll be looking at next video. So we will look at the bridge ID and uh, port cost in this video and then we'll be ready for the root bridge election process in the next video, right? So we need to understand what L2, layer 2 loop is, right? We discussed this in one of our videos earlier in the series. Uh, so if you have watched from the beginning, I'm sure you would have uh, been introduced to STP uh, a while ago. But to summarize what STP uh, means is if let's say we have two switches and let's call the switch A and then we have switch B. If I have two links to the switch right and if there is a broadcast let's say for instance there is uh, one user let's call her Joe and then uh, we have another user Jim right but if Joe sends a message to Jim uh, Joe sends that frame on to uh, switch A now switch A does not know the MAC address for Jim so what it does is it would send a broadcast. Now if he sends a broadcast or if switch A sends a broadcast that broadcast goes out in all the interfaces like if, if that message comes from here switch A would say okay fine I can see that it's coming from here so I'm going to send that broadcast out on both the interface because I don't know where that MAC address is. Now when this MAC address when this broadcast comes to uh, B uh, switch B by definition of broadcast it means that if you are in the same broadcast domain you you c collect that broadcast in one of the interface send it out in all the other interfaces so switch B would take that message 
and send it to Jim and also this message coming from here would be sent back on that interface and message coming from there would be sent back on this interface right so this broadcast would come back to switch A and switch A would do the same thing switch A would think this is a new broadcast it will take that and put it on this interface and the broadcast coming from here it would take and put it on that interface so this will go around and around and around this is uh, this becomes a loop right it goes in loops and let's say by that time there is another broadcast coming on that interface right and that also will go through the same process of loop they would take from one interface put in the other interface put in the other interface so this is a layer 2 loop and layer 2 loop when it happens this way it creates a broadcast storm right basically so many broadcasts come on to that network that uh, that whole network is unusable so this broadcast storm can only be stopped if one of the devices fail or one of the links fail so in such that the loop is broken right if one of the links fail then of course there is no loop and all the broadcast dies out there if let's say the physically uh, one of the links don't go down the one of the switches will fail because after some times if if the broadcast storm becomes so strong one of the switches will run out of its m memory and it will fail and it will start restart again and the broadcast will uh, the broadcast storm gets uh, sorted out but that's one of the problem the second problem is mac address instability right so this is switch a and this is switch b let's in this case put another scenario and ideally in, to in today's world this is more than having two links between switches this could be one of the reasons why you have a loop again you have three devices and three devices still form a loop around uh, so if one device uh, sends a broadcast for whatever reason uh, and this is f0 slash 1 and this is f0 slash 2 and this is f0 slash 3 now when this user sends a broadcast to switch a and let's take another color and let's assume this user has a computer with a mac address of aaa right like some aaa something switch a whenever a frame comes in on f01 it says the source MAC address is going to be this and it is destined to go to let's say uh, the other user here and that got a uh, MAC address of BBB so it says source MAC address is AAA sending to destination MAC address of BBB now switch A says okay I see that your source MAC address of AAA that means now AAA is available on f0 slash 1 that is for sure it doesn't know where BBB is that is another problem to solve but it definitely knows where AAA is so it updates its MAC address table and it puts that information there now since it doesn't know BBB it says I'm gonna broadcast it I'm gonna flood this onto all my available interfaces so he sends that message onto both his interface f0 slash 2 and f0 slash 3 now let's assume switch B since it's connected to uh, this MAC address of BBB when switch B receives this message it says fine I know where BBB is I'm gonna put this and of course uh, let's say this is okay I'm gonna use black okay so this is again F0 slash 1 F0 slash 2 F0 slash 3 right so when when switch B receives this broadcast it says I see that you're coming from a source MAC address of AAA so switch B also says okay I can see AAA is connected to it's a, or reachable through my F0 slash 2 interface fine and I know let's say it already knows that BBB is in connected to its F0 slash 1 so it sends that message to BBB now if you remember previously A had sent the same broadcast to C as well so C would forward that broadcast now C would be coming in f uh, th this broadcast would coming be coming in from F0 slash 3 so when B receives that broadcast it says okay you're saying that this is a message coming from a source MAC address of AAA but I know that AAA is present is connected to my F0 slash 2 earlier now 
for some reason I need to update this so it upgrade updates is AAA to F0 slash 3 right so it says now AAA is available on F0 slash 3 right so because of the now when this broadcast again starts going out here switch A, A also would start getting confused because switch A originally thought AAA source MAC address was connected to F01 but then now this broadcast would tell it's connected to F0 slash 2. Similarly, this would also go out on this interface and when this reaches here, now A would be, switch A would be confused because now F0 slash 3 also says that AA is connected to them. So constantly the MAC address tape would be updated between these three interfaces and that creates a problem. So that is the MAC address table instability problem. So first we have the broadcast storm problem and then we have the MAC address table instability where every few seconds the MAC address table had to be updated because of a layer 2 loop. That's the second problem. The third problem is if you remember here this um, uh, user sent a message or a frame or packet to uh, switch A, switch A sent it out on both its interfaces, right? So when switch B received it, switch B forwarded that to the correct user, which is BBB, that was the destination, that's fine. So B, this user received the frame. But because he, switch A had al also sent that same frame to switch C, now switch C will also forward that to switch B and switch B will say, okay, you want to go to MAC address of BBB, so I'm going to send it. So this user would get the same packet twice, right? That's that's a problem because if it's an application that was sending an a, a sending the data, the same frame cannot come twice. If the same frame comes twice, there's a duplicate frame and there is some problem in the network. So multiple copies of the same frame is reach, reached to the user. So th this is these are the three problems a layer two loop can create. Now the solution to all the problems that we discussed uh, in uh, layer 2 loop is a, pro uh, a protocol called STP, Spanning Tree Protocol. Now if you watched my previous video where we discussed STP many, many, many videos ago, I don't even remember the <laughs> video number, I think it's day 10 or day 12, I don't know. Anyway, one of the videos where we discuss port modes and things like that uh, is a way where you break the loop in the network. So typically, in today's world, like I said, uh, loops happen when there are devices connected and it forms a loop, a broadcast loop. So if these are all in the same broadcast domain, they all switches and there is a loop that is formed. STP protocol uh, using this uh, STP algorithms, we'll discuss about algorithms and how it works. Uh, it decides one of the switches to be a root switch okay so okay let's make switch A as the root switch now it says every port connected to the root switch has to be in the forwarding state so this port and this port will be in forwarding uh, state right so it will be uh, forwarding uh, packets to and frames to the root switch so whatever is connected to root switch directly that has to always be in the forwarding state now from this link between B and C one of the link one of the ports in fact will be in a state called as a blocking state that means it will not be able to forward traffic physically they would still be connected that means B can still send traffic to uh, C it's just that this the port in C it will not process so switch C will not process traffic received from uh, switch B right but physically they're still uh, working so how does it work it works using something called as BID BID is bridge ID now you need to remember that STP protocol was invented and written way way before the Ethernet switches were invented, right? So since the protocol was uh, invented or written before the Ethernet switches were invented, you would still find the term bridge used many, many times. And most of the terminologies in STP it still works in a bridge, con bridge concept. I mean, concept-wise, it's exactly the same. There's no problem between switch and bridge. It's just that the term bridge is still used. So bridge ID is what it is used. Even though it should be switch ID, it's still called the bridge ID. 
the, the the messages that these switches exchange to understand and to uh, you know do an election to find out who the root switch is and to keep updating each other is something called as BPDU that is bridge protocol data unit BPDU again you see bridge it says bridge but that's all it is so don't get confused even though it says bridge it still refers to switch right so uh, so these BPDU messages they have uh, they keep exchanging every two seconds that's the hollow timer it has a hollow timer of two seconds so every two seconds it keeps updating each other and what does what do they update they update uh, first they update about the root switch root switch MAC address and BID of the root switch and it tells what is the cost for it to reach the root switch and now what is cost each port has a cost depending on the speed we'll talk about it in I think the next slide or the slide after that so don't worry about that so this is how they break so they ultimately try to break logically they shut down one of the ports or they put that port in a blocking state and that breaks the loop so now broadcast sending out let's say if C sends a broadcast that will go to switch A switch A would forward that to switch B switch B would forward that back to switch C but switch C's interface since it's in blocking state will not process that and hence the the loop is broken right that's what basically STP is now STP is IEEE 802.1 D standard it's a very old standard um, so it is it is uh, open source it is IEEE standard uh, the problem with I, uh, IEEE 8021D or the common STP is it takes about 50 seconds, right? It takes 50 seconds to go if let's say there's some change, one of the links breaks. Uh, for it to update, it takes a maximum of 50 seconds. That is, it has two seconds of uh, hello timer. Then it has, so, so basically what happens is it has states blocking state then it has two intermediate state called as listening state and uh, learning state and then it goes to forwarding states now hello messages it comes f uh, every two seconds so every two seconds these uh, devices uh, exchange hello messages so C will send hello to B C will send to A A will send to B now each of them updates uh, uh, BPDU hellos hello messages every two seconds if at all any any device does not receive a hello message it waits for 10 times the hello timer right so by default it is 2 seconds hello timer that means it waits for 20 seconds or 20 uh, 10 hellos right if it misses 10 hellos then it starts uh, updating it starts taking action now stick start taking action is it goes to the listening stage and it stays there for 15 seconds and then it goes to the learning states and it stays there for 15 seconds so totally 15 15 and 20 it's 50 seconds right so it takes a lot of time to converge and in a switching world that is that is a lot of time to improve on that IEEE wrote another standard I think it is in 2004 it came out with another standard called as 802.1 W which is nothing but rapid spanning tree RSTP now RSTP improved upon this timing the uh, first thing RS RSTP does not have the two intermediate states it directly goes from uh, blocking to forward or uh, forwarding to blocking uh, in both both the ways it would go instantaneously uh, whereas in STP blocking to forward it took a lot of time but if if a port had to go from forward to blocking that was instantaneous right but in 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 RSTP blocking port is also called as discarding uh, state not port discarding state the blocking state is called as a discarding state in uh, RSTP and then there were no intermediate state directly it goes to the forwarding state to blo uh, uh, from blocking state to forwarding state it would directly go in also the forwarding state had something called as the alternate uh, port in 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 SCP there used to be a root port right root port are the ports that it connects so in this case uh, this is a root port RP and this port is a root port right in RSTP these root ports other than having a root port it would also have an alternative port right so in this case this would be an alt port and this would be an alt port right so it has configured an alternate port so in case the root port uh, breaks or uh, that link breaks the alternative port automatically 
quickly instantaneously becomes the uh, root port so in this case if this breaks for some reason automatically the alt port would come up and this would become the root port right in instantaneously uh, even worst case scenario it would take 10 seconds to converge uh, in this case it would be 50 seconds so it is 10 seconds versus 50 seconds so basically that's the difference between stp and rstp rstp it is a slightly faster not slightly it's much more quicker than STP and uh, as more and more technology came RSTP was something that uh, IEEE had to come out with right so it's called rapid spanning tree protocol now Cisco implemented RST, uh, STP in a slightly different way the problem with STP is STP considered the broadcast domain as one single domain and it worked in the native VLAN or the default VLAN so VLAN 1 is where uh, STP considered so it considered all the traffic to be part of that one large broadcast domain that didn't really work especially with uh, newer devices and uh, Cisco has been implementing VLAN for a very very long time so Cisco said you know we're going to implement STP in slightly different way called as the PVSTP right that is per VLAN STP so the same thing it said Every VLAN would have an STP, which the IEEE 802.1D couldn't do, right? They couldn't do. So they had to do it in one default VLAN. They did it in the VLAN 1. But Cisco came up with PVSTP, where each VLAN had an STP running. So each VLAN could have a different root bridge, and uh, they could have the same STP process in each VLAN. And when uh, Cisco upgraded or when uh, IEEE upgraded to rapid STP, Cisco also went to something called as the RPVSTP, right? So the only problem was the Cisco's PVSTP and RPVSTP had to run the ISL, the interswitch link encapsulation. And you know this is a Cisco proprietary encapsulation. And uh, the IEEE 8 not uh, 2.1 D and W RSTP and STP worked on 802.1 Q encapsulation right Cisco said fine when ISL was having its limitations and uh, Cisco said you know maybe we should go to 802.1 Q encapsulation Cisco improved on their PVSTP and RPVSTP by supporting 802.1 Q and that is what our uh, PVSTP plus and RPVSTP plus right so RPVSTP uh, I mean PVSTP is uh, per VLAN STP plus and RPVSTP is rapid PVSTP plus right so it's exactly the same thing just that it now supported ISL and 802.1Q and now this is the industry standard PVSTP and RPVSTP right uh, so in the STP process uh, we discussed uh, port cost now port cost earlier there were uh, port speeds you know we had ports that had uh, 10 mbps 100 mbps 1 gig gigabit uh, uh, ethernet and 10 gbps right so when they assigned cost they assigned 100 for 10 mbps then 19 for 100 mbps 4 for 1 gbps and uh, 2 for 10 gbps there were no costs for 100 gbps and 1 tbps so in 2004, IEEE said the new standard costs were 2,200,000, 20,000, 2,220 for these port speeds. Now, these port speeds are good, so you you can understand and becomes easy. You know, as the speed increases, the cost decreases. So if, if you have two links, we had a fast Ethernet link and a uh, gigabit Ethernet link, you know the gigabit Ethernet link would have much lesser cost uh, than the fast Ethernet. And hence, if when, when the election process happens, the gigabit Ethernet port would get preference, right? So lesser, always the lesser cost will have preference. You will see that. I think most probably you will see that in the next video because we would look at the uh, election process in the next video but just understand this is how costs are calculated next we're going to look at the bridge ID we spoke about the bridge ID now in STP bridge ID had two bytes of data so this is two bytes each block is a byte so this is one byte this is one byte so the bridge priority had two bytes of data and the MAC address was six bytes of data right so every switch has a MAC address so that MAC address uh, 
plus a priority together forms the bridge ID. That is STP. Now, PVSTP plus improved on this. So this STP had two bytes of data, that is 16 bits. PVSTP, uh, that is Cisco implementation, they said the first 12 bits would be part of something called the extended system ID. That is nothing but VLAN numbers. So if VLAN uh, was one, so it, this has 12 bits, 12 bits would give you 409 uh, 5 0 to 4095 and if you know our VLAN numbers would with extended VLAN uh, goes from 0 to 4095 right so whatever the VLAN number that would be represented in the first 12 bits right rightmost and the leftmost four bits would represent the bridge priority now if you know binary arithmetic uh, and if you look at our uh, magic table these four has a place value of 4096 8192 416384 and 32768 right so that has 16 combinations each of these it could it could be all 000 so that becomes priority becomes 0 or it could be 0001 that is 0 0 0 and 1 and if you add uh, the place value that's 4096 so that would have a priority of 4096 or depending on any of these bits if you change the bits it would all be one of these numbers you have these 16 combinations and uh, if you look at it each of them have an increment of 4096 so by default all Cisco switches have a priority of 32768 but you could choose any of these numbers as a priority right these are the only valid numbers that you can use for your bridge priority now so when you when you're working on Cisco switches you always have to remember that uh, 32768 is by default the priority plus you will add the extended system right so this will be 3 32768 and then if you're working on VLAN 1 it will be 1 so 32768 plus 1 32769 would uh, be the bridge priority for VLAN 1 right so VLAN 1's bridge ID priority would be 32769 and you would have the MAC address right if you remember I said for the bridge ID it is bridge priority this whole thing becomes a bridge priority that is 32769 plus the MAC address of whatever that is right so if the MAC address is AAA this becomes the MAC address if there is another device that will let's say if it starts 32769 and if the MAC address is BBB uh, if you compare this the priority is matching so that's a tie-in priority it then looks at the MAC address and you see that this device got a uh, lower MAC address and this device has more priority right and in the election process this priority plays a very very big role so just understand this concept you know if you want to watch this video again just watch it but you need to understand how the bridge ID works right uh, if you want this device even though this MAC address is uh, more we cannot change the MAC address part but we definitely can change this part so you can go into the switch and change it to any of these numbers so if you want this device to have more priority you could give it zero you could give the bridge priority part to be zero so zero plus one for VLAN so it'll be zero plus one so the priority will be one and then the MAC address and this will always have more priority on any of these devices with a higher priority number right so this is how um, uh, the priority works so you need to understand that so just watch that watch this video again and like always today's offer is day 36 hyphen 50 off that you would get a 50 percent off uh, if you want to purchase anything from our website and that's how you can support us so please go ahead feel free to uh, purchase something from our website so thank you so much uh, like i said this is a very very important topic so i would request all of you to watch this video once again uh, and it is always going to help you right so uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, see you back very very soon for the next part in this series